Hi folks, it's Virginia here. I just uh, want to thank all of you for buying your uh, German Shepherd pups for me. It's been my pleasure and a joy to bring them uh, up to their full eight weeks before they come into your home. And I worked very hard. It wasn't easy at times and uh, was very fun at the same time too. I do want to go over a few tips and pointers and things for this transition to make um, from our home to your home with your pup. And we'll start with the day that you come to pick up your pup. Um, you will be getting your AKC registration papers and your vet records from me. I do recommend that you call your vet and have a, an appointment set up within a month of having your pup in your home so you can get onto a regular shot record. And by the end of his or her first year, your pup will have all the recommended shots. I also recommend bringing paper towels and a small garbage bag because it is not unusual for pups to um, get motion sickness. And it, it's something they outgrow, but it's best to be prepared. Now, on transition time, it's going to be a little difficult because your pup is leaving the only thing he's familiar with in our home, and litter mates and Shelby, of course, and then into a strange home with, you know, all new people and all new everything. So be patient. Your pup might cry and whine. Uh, just, it, they outgrow it. They soon, you know, you are the new memories and we fade away and they don't remember anything about us here. But for those few days in between, just extra love and cuddling and it'll all be over with before you know it. On pottying, I do recommend... <clears throat> excuse me, that you use the same door all the time uh, until your pup is older. It's confusing going into a strange house and then all different doors. You have bedroom doors, bathroom doors, kitchen doors. I mean, doors are everywhere. So I recommend um, putting the newspaper by the door that is your outdoor. And I also recommend that when they do use that paper to layer on top of it with a fresh layer of paper to keep that scent below, um, there is a draw too. That's the outdoor. And I also recommend um, uh, waking your pup up and her carrying your pup outside onto your uh, your lawn to start to learn to go out there often because if you wake up your pup and carry him out he's more likely to go outside right away and then you do your positive reinforcement with a little bit of a treat doesn't have to be a big treat just the taste of a treat is in reinforcement verbally will probably uh, make that a lot easier if you're letting your pup wake up and wanting your pup to follow you and walk he's more likely going to have an accident on the floor on his way out the outdoor so in the beginning scoop him up Carry him right out, set him on the grass, and do all the positive uh, reinforcement that you can. For feeding, I uh, I kind of left a lot of food in the bowl at all times because with the litter of pups, they're all hungry at different times. But I did let the bowl go empty a few times during the day so they would understand a little bit of hunger is not bad and having an appetite and trying to encourage them to eat together. But in your home, you need to decide what's best for the way you would like to do it. Feed a couple times a day. I just leave food out for my dogs to eat all the time. You know, they're older now. They eat when they're hungry. And German Shepherds, they're not gorgers, and they don't eat everything in sight as soon as they see food. So it's up to you to decide. And when it comes to feeding, I recommend when they get bigger um, to get feeding stations and um, have the food up higher because it's difficult for a big pup to eat off the floor. You, you want their food up at, at chest level for easier to swallow, easy to chew. And um, I just have a tote, you know, we bought a tote and got holes in the top lid and, you know, inserted the bowls and then I just keep the food in the bottom. You can buy an expensive model at uh, the pet store, but it's really not necessary. I bought my tote for $5 at Big Lots and it works great and it's kind of clever actually. For the food, um, I fed puppy chow, Purina puppy chow and uh, pedigree puppy chow. Those two different kinds, I traded them on and off so they would get used to different flavors. And it's not a bad idea either to change up your dog's food too. It gets boring having the same thing over and over. I recommend at this young age to try to avoid um, canned food. It is just going to give them loose stools and you really don't want that in your carpet or on your floors. They're not able to control their bowels that much yet. So save the wet food for later on. Like now that Duke and Shelby are older, I split one can of wet food between the two of them every night with their dinner and I just mix it into their dry food. Works just fine. 
Um, I've been asked about crate training and what my thoughts are on that. And I feel um, crate training is an excellent way to do it as long as you're doing it with positive reinforcement. A crate is not the place for time out. It's not a punishment. It is supposed to be a home in your home. So line it with blankets, put a few toys in there, leave the door open, let your pup in and out, let your pup know that this is their safe haven. And if you plan to use your crate during, you know, your work day if no one's home, then if you're using your crate as positive reinforcement at other times, you will have no problem getting your pup into the crate if you uh, need to leave to go to work. Leashing. I think you should start leashing right away and teaching your pup to walk properly. And I'm not a fan of choke collars. People are, you know, they use them, they swear by them. I just am not happy with the idea of, you know, choking for obedience. We have a, an intelligent German Shepherd. Your pup will learn the rules of walking very quickly. Um, normally, if your your pup is going to be pulling and tugging and wanting to go ahead of you, um, this is the what is taught by trainers. You stop. You stand still and you wait for your pup to come and sit down next to you, which, you know, sometimes it could take 10 minutes, sometimes it's one minute. Uh, you wait. When that pup sits down next to you, praise, treat, reward, start walking again. And then um, eventually the idea comes that I walk. I don't yank on my uh, owner's arms. And if you are out with your dog in public, please to avoid letting them sniff other dogs' uh, feces. That is just where the way bacteria or uh, parasites transfer and disease and uh, yuck. Uh, grooming. Just don't overbathe your dog. German Shepherds are two coated dogs. <laughs> you hear them over there wailing away. They're playing right now. Um, don't overwash. You want the oils to be in the outer coat. The two layers of fur is a soft coat underneath that is insulation uh, for heat. Um, in the summer, it protects them, and in the winter, of course, you know, it protects them from the cold. Um, you want the oils in the skin, but you don't want um, to have them stinky either. So you just use common sense on that. Uh, brush your dog often. You're going to see, you know, at times of the year, it's going to be uh, more shedding than other times of the year. And never, ever shave your German Shepherd. On to chewing. I've never had ours uh, chew furniture or chew up our shoes or, you know, I've distracted them right away from anything they shouldn't have with their proper chew toys. Do the same thing. You don't want to beat and slap and, you know, scold. You just direct them away. And before you know it, you'll never have anything ruined. I've had nothing ever ruined of mine. And I just do it with positive reinforcement. Uh, when it comes to things your pup should not have, I would recommend Googling for the complete list, but huge no-nos, no chocolate, no grapes, no onions. These are things that your pup should never have because it can be fatal. And um, treat bags. Keep your treat bags up high. Uh, this is a shared experience from a pup that I had that uh, got her hands on one of my treat bags and uh, got her head wedged in there and she couldn't get out and... Uh, tragically, this was an avoidable situation, uh, but she suffocated in that bag of treats, and it was a painful experience, so I'm sharing that experience with you so you don't have to have that happen. Uh, and finally, uh, take a picture of your pup when you get home, you know, shortly after you get your pup home. Get a really good picture and frame it, because that picture... Uh, is going to be precious over time because that, your pup is going to grow so fast you're going to have wished you've done it. Um, I even took one of their puppy teeth and glued it to the frame of my uh, puppy's picture and it was kind of exciting, you know, as time went on, now that they're all grown up, to look back at that picture and do it. Oh, I remember that, you know. Um, keep in mind, do you have questions? I might have the answer. I'm not an expert, but I've learned a lot over the years. And I don't mind if you call me or text or email me your questions because it's my, uh, my hope that the transition from my home into yours just brings you as much joy as it does having a litter of pups for you. So... Thanks, and good luck.